Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. A very warm welcome to the day two of the Advanced Audit and Assurance Webinar to Success. And I am your tutor, Kashif Kamran. This is a free webinar which will be publicly available. Now the proceedings for the day two and the agenda for the day two looks like something on your screen. We discussed on the day one yesterday that there are four essentials to success which we are looking for in this webinar. Uh, we discussed the first essential yesterday, that was the approach to success, and that was covered on the day one. Today on the second day, we are looking at grasp. What are we grasping? And what sort of grasping is important in terms of success in the AAA paper? So we'll be covering the grasp as a success factor in the AAA paper on the day two, followed by day three tomorrow, and then day four, we're looking at techniques to success and inspiration to success. So let's start the second essential of success, grasp. So welcome to the day two, grasp to success. Let's see what are we grasping. Grasp to, uh, grasp to success. Grasp is the control and command you should have around the AAA core syllabus to excel in the exam. I've seen a lot of time the students who are not very familiar with the syllabus of AAA. They have not gone over the syllabus. They have not gone over the syllabus areas you have, which has been defined by the AAA examining team. Probably because you, you uh, had no idea of the syllabus guide or you didn't bother about reading the syllabus guide of the AAA and you were less prepared for the day of exam and something come in the exam uh, which you didn't expect it because you 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 didn't bothered about reading the 100 person syllabus and i will be giving you a summary today of how you can have a good grasp of the 100 person syllabus within the one one and a half hour of this webinar today so let's see what sort of graphs we need each syllabus area has an historical pattern, how it comes in the exam, of how it is tested. But yes, you should be prepared for the unexpected. Uh, we will be discussing the unexpected uh, tomorrow uh, when we talk about techniques, because when something unexpected comes in the exam paper, uh, that automatically increases the student stress level. And a lot of time the student gets into the panic mode with something unexpected, and they spoil their exam setting. So what sort of exam techniques you should have in place for expect the unexpected? But if you know the historical trends of how a topic comes in the paper, you might be 85, 90% secured with that historical patterns, but you, you should keep a space of 10% for expect the unexpected. So historical patterns can help you with 85 to 90% of the paper, but unexpected could be 10% of the paper and how you should deal with the unexpected. Wait for the day three to guide you on that. Let's analyze each syllabus area for its historical pattern and any possible deviations in the future exams in line with what happened in March 24. Was there anything unusual in March 24, which you should be aware of? Uh, I'll, I'll be focusing on that. Uh, we will be discussing that what sort of deviation the examining team is taking uh, in the recent past of the AAA, particularly in the December 23 exam setting and March 24 exam setting. So you are well prepared for the upcoming June 2024 exams. So let's analyze the syllabus areas of AAA and let's see what historical trends are there with any possible deviations. We are starting first with syllabus area A. I hope you know there are how many syllabus areas in AAA? Anyone know, knows about that? Quick answers. How many syllabus areas we have in AAA? Six? No, seven. Syllabus area A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G is the current issue, right? So technically, yes, six, but if you include the current issues, we have seven syllabus areas. We'll be scanning each one of them for your guidance. Let's start first with syllabus area A. Now, when we look at the syllabus area A, and we look at the historical patterns, this is more about number one, 
auditor responsibility for laws and regulations, auditor responsibility for opening balances, including the procedures on opening balances, fraud, what is the auditor responsibility for fraud and money laundering? What are anti-money laundering policies and procedures which a firm should have in place? What an audit firm should do uh, to be part of the anti-money laundering policies and procedures? Or even the stages of money laundering uh, or indicators of money laundering from a given scenario. Examiner might give you a scenario asking you to identify the client involvement in money laundering or the stages of money laundering because these, these have been the types of questions in the past paper. So the number one is what you should be good at. Number two, how auditor apply professional skepticism to a given case study? We have seen a couple of questions in the prior history of AAA asking you to apply professional skepticism to a given scenario. I hope there was a question, very popular one. I think that was the Northwest Company question uh, from December 16 exams, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where the case was given and something unusual was hap happening in the case. And you were asked to apply professional skepticism to the unusual elements in the case. And how would you be skeptical as an auditor to the unusual things given in the case study? Because skeptical means to have a questioning mind, uh, to be alert of unusual things being demonstrated by the management or the auditor. So applying to professional skepticism is, is, is an important area. Matters in determining the auditor liability, expect the unexpected. I told you yesterday when we were looking at the day one, uh, 16 technical articles came in focus yesterday. And in those 16, there was auditor liability. And I was of the view that auditor liability has not come since very long and uh, looking at the examiner recent tendency of putting something unusual in the paper, there is a possibility you might get a six marks or eight marks question around auditor liability. So please ensure you do read the article around auditor liability and be good that what sort of matters we need to consider to decide whether the auditor is liable or not. Matters in determining the reliance on the work of others when you're relying on the work of others like internal auditor or expert particularly, what sort of matters you need to consider? I hope you're all familiar with matters like independence, competence, experience, and the documentation. Before you rely on the work of the internal auditor or the expert, even relying on the work of the component auditor, uh, the ISA 600, 610, and 620. Group order and the responsibility of the group auditor in relation to a significant component. What is a significant component? The definition of a significant component in line with the revised ISA 600. The revised ISA 600 was one of the top 16 articles I shared with you yesterday. So please ensure you read that, you know what is a significant component, how the group auditor identifies a significant component, and what is the group auditor responsibility for a significant component. These are all questions which are possible from the syllabus area A. Advantages and disadvantages of joint audit. We know this, this question has come quite regularly in the last five to six years of AAA. Outsourcing, and how does outsourcing affects the planning of the audit and the performance of the audit? We've seen questions on that. So if, if you are going for an audit of a company and the company has outsourced a function, how does outsourcing by the entity will affect the planning of the auditor. How will outsourcing impact your procedures uh, on a particular function which has been outsourced? So you should have a sound knowledge about outsourcing and its impact on the audit planning from the reference of ISA 402. Role of the audit committee uh, in hiring the auditor, in remunerating the auditor and in terminating the auditor. We know the focus on audit committee has increased a bit in recent exams. So be sure you have a sound knowledge around corporate governance. I think one of the article I recommended yesterday was around corporate governance uh, in my top 16 articles yesterday. So if you read that article, you will have a good idea about role of audit committee and also the role of audit committee during the conduct of the audit. When the audit is being conducted, what sort of a role an audit committee has to play during the conduct of the audit. Please ensure you're familiar with the eight parameters which are coming on your screen right now. This is a scan of syllabus area A. This is more like a summarized scan of uh, the syllabus area A, but at the end of the day, this is not uh, like an absolute form. 
this is more like a reasonable assurance that you should be knowing this to survive. Is everyone clear with syllabus area A? Uh, should we move on to the syllabus area B now? And please remember the 16 technical articles I gave you yesterday. They are must to be explored. Yes, please, uh, Kantesh, you need to watch the day one recording for the 16 articles, right? Okay, let's move on to the syllabus area B then. In terms of the syllabus area B, which moves around ethical and professional issues, this syllabus area focus on application to a case, identifying and explaining the ethical and professional issues and recommending actions. One of the most favorite examining team question, and you find this question mostly in the question number one, ethical and professional issues. And you know, this is a very popular question. In normally in the question number one, you find it for six to eight marks. So you should be very strong uh, in the ethical code. You should have revised your ethical code very well. You should know the IESBA code. You should be very sound on the threats. You should be very sound on the safeguards, the safeguards for a public interest entity and a safeguard for a non-public interest entity, the listed and the non-listed. Uh, conflict of interest. What is a conflict of interest and what are possible safeguards for conflict of interest and confidentiality and the voluntary disclosure and the um, mandatory disclosure of uh, confidentiality. So when you whistleblow on a confidentiality uh, case, you should all be prepared for that. So you know syllabus area B uh, is about ethical and professional issues. And uh, I did recommend it one article among the top 16 articles yesterday uh, about applying ethics, uh, which is in syllabus area B. And that tells you how you solve a question on ethics. So please ensure you do read that article from the website. So this is syllabus area B. And I hope you're all sound on it. Syllabus area C, the most important one so far. This is a very popular syllabus area in recent past papers. And this focuses on two things. Number one, the syllabus area C focuses on practice management. What sort of things comes under practice management? Something very favorite of examiner. Matters in accepting a new audit client. Matters in accepting an engagement from an existing client or from a new client. Look at the number one and number two. You should have a checklist. What matters you consider when you're accepting a new client? What matters you consider when you're accepting an engagement from an existing client? Like your existing client offering you a forensic service or your existing client offering you a due diligence service or any other service. So what, what sort of matters you would consider when you're offering another engagement to your existing client, right? Or to the new client. So if you are offering engagement to an existing client or to a new client, what difference does it make? And what sort of things add on to a new client? You know, with new client, you need to check the client integrity. With a new client, you need to do the customer due diligence, right? So customer due diligence, know your customer, uh, client integrity. These are sort of things you do with the new client, right? You don't do them with the existing clients. Yes, and, and the preconditions of the audit, exactly. Number three, matters in relation to the audit proposal and the audit tender. What are contents of the audit proposal? What are contents of the audit tender? One of the same thing. But we know in uh, there is a history of this topic. Uh, it has not come in the recent past but what if it, it comes in the 2024 exams asking you what are contents of an audit proposal? Matters in relation to the audit firm advertisement. Uh, we have seen a question on that in uh, the uh, early history of AAA uh, where you were given an advertisement and there were some flaws in the advertisement and you need to identify that what are the issues in the advertisement of the audit firm. Firms are allowed to advertise, right? But there are some conditions. So have those conditions been met? and terms of engagement. What are in, what are terms of engagement letter? We have seen questions around that for three to four marks asking you uh, explain the terms of engagement in the context of the case study. So the, the, these are parameters you should be good at from the topic known as practice management. 
I hope you're all clear on that, right? The second very important area from syllabus area C is quality management. And this is very popular. Evaluate the quality management issues given in the case study and recommendations. Examiner gives you a case where you have several quality management issues. You need to identify the issue and you need to explain why it is an issue and then you need to give an action. There are several particular exam focus given in ISQM1 and ISQM2, which were tested in recent attempts and are potential for future settings. Listen to, listen to this very carefully, all of you. You know, there are two articles, uh, ISQM1 and ISQM2. I even recommended these articles in my top 16 articles yesterday. You need to read these two articles. Because in these two articles, the examining team has given you an exam focus of how this could be tested. And there is no one exam focus. There are several exam focus. What if one of the exam focus where the examining team is telling you a question like this can come and you've not read the article and a question like this comes in June 24 exams, what will you do? Just, just let me show you. Uh, a lot of time the student missed this uh, when they're preparing them uh, for the upcoming exams. Just let me show you the AAA technical articles. Can you see the AAA technical articles in front of your screen? Just please confirm me that quickly. Okay, great. So you go down and you go to the syllabus area C and you click on uh, ISQM1, for example. Uh, can you see in front of your screen ISQM1 now? Please confirm. Okay, great. So you go down and you read ISQM1. This is not just for this article. This is for every article you are reading. And every article gives you exam focus of how this can be tested. Because ISQM1 and 2 are more recent articles, there are plenty of exam focus which are still not being asked for. And when I say expect the unexpected, you didn't read this article. And there is certain thing given in the article which comes in June 24 exams because you didn't read exam focus. Now see how much exam focus is just given in this particular article, which is right in front of your screen. You go down and you go down and you go down and you go down and you go down. See, can you see this box here, exam focus? It's telling you that the article you read above, how can it come into the exam paper? So exam focus is telling you the article you read above this box. How can it come? And you are unprepared. Go down. Another exam focus. Examining team is telling you how governance and leadership can come in the exam paper. You go down and you, you see the third exam focus. And in this exam focus, they're giving you a whole story of how things could be tested third exam focus in the in the one article you go down and you find the fourth exam focus and you go down and you find the fifth exam focus you go down and you find the sixth exam focus then you go down and you find the seventh exam focus just in one article isqm1 of this seven if anyone comes in june what will you do you read the article and do every exam focus, understand every exam focus, because some of that exam focus definitely will be in the June 24 exam. Seven, seven in ISQM1, right? Let's see the ISQM2. Okay, can you see the ISQM2 in front of your screen? We got seven from ISQM1, right? Let's see how much in ISQM2. Okay, we got this. The first one, so this becomes number eight. Or, or, or the first one, the first one for ISQM2. You go down, second one for ISQM2, third one for ISQM2, fourth one for ISQM2, fourth, fifth, fifth one for ISQM2, sixth one for ISQM2, and that ends. 7 for ISQM1, 6 for ISQM2, so that is 13 exam focus. Have you read them? Your exams are 26 days away. 
Seriously, tell me, have you ever bothered about reading these 13 exam focus from IESQM 1 and 2? Have you been that serious? Have you made a list of the 13 exam focus on uh, somewhere? Now, what if some of that 13 comes in June 24 exam? You will regret yourself later, right? So will, you, will all of you be making a checklist of the 13 exam focus in the next 24 hours or next 48 hours when you're reading this? And will you ensure that every exam focus you know? Because some of that might come as expect the unexpected on the day of exam. So because it's a new article and there are so many things in this article which are yet to be explored, this is not an old article, right? So being a new article, has examiner tested all 13 exam focus? No, hardly three of them. So you should know the 13 and you should know how they will be tested. So is everyone clear with syllabus area C, practice management and the types of question which comes on it and quality management and the types of question which come on it. Just one question on quality management and you find them in section B. Practice management, you equally find in section A and section B, but quality management has become more of a topic which you're finding in section B of the paper. But please ensure you do read the recommended 16 articles from the day to yesterday, day one yesterday. Amina, the difference between the first point, in the first point, we are accepting a new client, audit client, audit client. In the second point, we are accepting engagement. Engagement means a service like due diligence, like um, prospective financial information like sustainability assurance, like review of internal control system, any service from either an existing client or a new client. So we are not offering audit to a new client here. We are offering a, a service to a new client here. A service could be anything other than audit. I hope you're clear with that. Okay, moving on to the syllabus area D, the most important one, right? Yes, yes, non-audit, exactly. You know, syllabus area D is so important, right? And oh, syllabus area D is important because it comes in question number one. We discussed that uh, on the day one yesterday in terms of exam structure. Syllabus area D, uh, this is the big one. Test it only in question one, not in section B. You will never get this in section B. You should be well versed with it because that is... 50% of your success in the AAA paper. Matters in planning the first year audit. Ask a question. Do you know them? Do you know what are planning matters for the first year audit? If not, revise them, prepare them. A couple of times we have seen questions on that for five to six marks. Evaluating the audit strategy of the component auditor. You are given an audit strategy of a component auditor and you are the group auditor in the question number one. There are some issues in the component auditor strategy. You need to identify the issues and tell how it could be addressed. So identifying the issues within the audit strategy of the component auditor. So please ensure you do that. I think there was one question in the March 20 paper, question number one, March 20, question number one. And if I'm not wrong, one was in September 18, question number one. You can do them as reference questions for evaluating the audit strategy. Yes, uh, Reshma, ISQM1, even though has come in December 23, even has come in March 24, will still come in June 24 because that's an area which is coming very regular. So don't expect this to be ruled out. And you know, you know, Reshma, there are so many papers of AAA being made for June exam, at least three to four papers, because uh, the papers have been held in different time zones. And ACC does not want the paper to be leaked out because the student, when they come out of the exam hall, they share the paper on the WhatsApp group. So ACC knows about it. So ACC made different sets of paper. So in one set of paper, you might find quality management. In the second set, you might not. I hope you're getting my point, Reshma. So evaluating the audit strategy of the component auditor. You can do questions like March 20, question number one, and September 18, question number one. I just spontaneously recalled them. Number three. Identify issues with the audit strategy document. You should be well versed with audit strategy as a topic. 
uh, I was told by some of my students who appeared for March 24 exams that there was a question like such in March 24. The paper is not published, so we are not very sure about the student reaction. But yes, it's quite possible that a question like such could have come because it's very much like the question at number two. You might be given an audit strategy and there are issues in the audit strategy and you are asked to identify the issues within the audit strategy and what will you do to address them. So identify issues within audit strategy. All of you should be well versed with what is an audit strategy. All of you should be well versed with what is included in an audit strategy. Please revise audit strategy as a document so that if you get a question where you need to identify the weaknesses within the audit strategy, you can easily identify them and recommend the correct action. So please be very careful. Sophia, I'll not be giving any list on audit strategy because this is just a free webinar. Please ensure you revise it from the book, the document, or just go on the Google type, what is an audit strategy? You will get an excellent answer on Google and under 10 minutes, you're prepared with it. You know, uh, the artificial intelligence or the chat G GBT has made life easier, at least for sake of preparation. You can prepare yourself well with these uh, automated tools. You cannot apply them in the exam paper, right? But at least you can uh, use them to prepare yourself for the AAA exams. Business risk, we know that's part of syllabus area D. Uh, please do read the exam technique article uh, part one under the syllabus area D around business risk. I recommended that yesterday in my 16 articles. So how you write a business risk answer that's already an article by the examiner and telling you how you write an answer to business risk. Audit risk. There is already an examining team article on audit risk and risk of material misstatement. The part two, I recommended this article yesterday uh, in the 16 articles. If you read through this article, it will guide you how you write a good answer for audit risk and the risk of material misstatement, which is equally important in, in, in the syllabus area D. So look at the screen, look at the syllabus area D in front of your screen. Uh, these are important things right in front of your screens. Just just one thing we're missing down here. Uh, there should be some corrections here, which I, if I can do, just give me one second. Just let me go back to my slide. Just 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 one minute. Uh, we had another area here which you cannot see in front of your screen. Just give me one second and I'm putting on the screen again. I hope you can see the screen back again. Okay, now risk of medieval misstatement. And the last thing is audit procedures, right? That was missing. Audit procedures is part of syllabus area D and audit procedures, you know, is such a fundamental part of the question number one, six to eight marks at times even 10 marks of audit procedures in the first question. You should be excellent into that. And you should know the techniques to excel on audit procedures. We'll be discussing that tomorrow in the techniques to success session. How to write a good audit risk answer? Read the exam technique article. How to write a good risk of material misstatement answer? Read the exam technique article. How to write a good business risk answer? Read the exam technique article. So you have so much support given by ACCA around uh, risk area and you can excel on that. Even in the article on risk, they will tell you how a question on risk can come. In the recent past, we have seen a different way in which risk questions are coming. Rather than examining team asking you, evaluate the significant audit risk. That's the straightforward question. They are asking questions in a different manner. They are saying why the following risk have been identified as significant risk. One, two, three, four. Number one, for example, shared based payment. Number two, deferred taxation. Number three, discontinued operation. Why the following risk has been identified as significant risk of material misstatement. And you read the scenario and you justify why the following has been identified as a significant wrong. So things have changed in recent past of how questions are coming on audit risk. And this is given in the examiner article part two and part one. So if, you, if you're not reading it, you are not doing justice. So please read through these articles. You should be well versed with these articles. You should know the type of questions which can come, the way they can come in the future exams and they're already coming. Is everyone clear with syllabus area D? Uh, is, is this a grasp 
to success helping you? We already got the grasp to success from A, B, C, and D. And I'm already referring to the 16 articles we got yesterday. So I hope this grasp to success is making some sense to you in terms of success. Okay, great. Okay, moving to the syllabus area E. We discussed yesterday in the paper structure that this is a must question in question um, in, in the section B. Agree, disagree. Is syllabus area E a must question in section B, just like syllabus area D being must in question number one? Is it must? Yes. So should you be excellent on E, just like D? So let's see what sort of things you should be prepared for E. Syllabus area E. One of the question in section B is from this area, no doubt about that. So you should be clear with this syllabus area and its testing, how it's tested in the historical trends. Com comment on the matters, accounting issues, and explain the evidence you should expect to find in the review of the working paper file. We know this is a very typical question you get from syllabus area E around evidence. Comment on the matters, and the matters are the accounting matters. And you comment on them, and then you explain the evidence you should be having in the working paper file, like copy of something, notes of something, results of something. Uh, that's, that's how you do, go down with evidence. Number two question, comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained by the audit team. So the evidence has already been obtained and there are issues within the evidence obtained and you are, you are given a case study. Comment on sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained. Do you think that the evidence obtained by the audit team is not adequate and why? Why you believe the evidence gathered by the audit team is inadequate? And if you think this is inadequate, then justify why and give recommendation that this should have been the adequate evidence. So comment on the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence obtained by the audit team. This is the second question you're getting on the topic of evidence and evidence is a critical part of the syllabus area E. So a lot of time the student think uh, syllabus area E is only about audit report, which is wrong. Syllabus area E is about completion and reporting evidence is completion, right? So a lot of time the students have an improper definition of the syllabus area E. They believe syllabus area E is just about qualified opinions, adverse opinions, disclaimer of opinions, and that they're very happy with it. Number three, matters to be communicated to those charged with governance. I even recommended you an article yesterday, communication with those charges with governance in my top 16 articles. Uh, and you might get a question around that because this is an area which, which is important. And a lot of time we have seen questions around it that there are certain issues in the case study. And examining team is asking you, what matters from the case study will you be communicating to TCWG within the case and justify why. Why are you communicating this matter to TCWG? You need to give a justification. So if you say, I will be communicating this matter, why? The justification, the underlying reason, why you why you think this is important uh, to be informed to those charged with governance. So please ensure you read the article, communication with TCWG, so you know the type of matters you communicate to them. You know the examples of matters you communicate to them and even the underlying reasons why you communicate to them and solve some questions around this. Next, communicating deficiencies in internal control to TCWG. A couple of times we've seen questions asking you that uh, uh, some deficiencies will be given in the uh, exam case study and you will be asked that uh, how would you be communicating these deficiencies to TCWG? You know, whenever you're communicating a deficiency to TCWG, you tell TCWG the implication of the deficiency. What will go wrong because of this uh, deficiency? Deficiency will be there in the case study, right? So when you're communicating the deficiency to TCWG, you will be telling uh, TCWG the implication, uh, which will be on the business if the deficiency is not resolved. 
and recommendation. As an auditor, you will also give recommendation to TCWG that how can they overcome this deficiency. So this is what you're communicating to TCWG, the implication of the deficiency and the recommendation of the deficiency. And this is communicating deficiencies to TCWG. The deficiency will be given in the exam paper, but you need to do extra implication of the deficiency and recommendation. Is that clear to all of you? So please ensure you read through these articles. Next, critical appraisal of the report. Now comes the report. See, after how long the report comes in? You know, this is a very frequently asked question of the examining team, giving you a, giving you a report and asking you to critically appraise it. What are the issues in the report? What is wrong in the report? And if you tell this is wrong, you need to tell why. And if you tell this is wrong, then you need to tell what is the correct thing. So if you believe the emphasis of a meta paragraph is wrong in the report, then you will say this is wrong and why. And then you will say instead of emphasis, a camp should have come. Or if you say qualified opinion is wrong, then you will say why qualified opinion is wrong. And instead of qualified, uh, adverse opinion should have come, for example. So you need to do the critical appraisal telling what is wrong, why it is wrong. And if it is wrong, then what should be the correct thing? So that's how you go down with critical appraisal. Going concern matters and reporting implications. Uh, you know, going concern is a very frequently asked question in the AAA paper. It came very heavily in the March 24 exam. So the possibility of that in June looks less, but you should be knowing the, uh, the going concern methods, the matters which cast doubt on the going concern status, particularly the reporting implication like MURGC. Uh, when you add a paragraph MURGC, uh, in what conditions you add a paragraph on MURGC in the audit report, you should be very well versed with it. Questions around accounting issues with reporting implication. Examiner do give you a couple of accounting issues like ABC, like investment property, sale and lease back. They ask you uh, discuss uh, each of them with uh, discuss uh, each of them with management. What is the issue in the accounting treatment? And if you believe the accounting treatment is wrong and the management is not addressing it, what is the implication for the audit report? So I hope you are familiar with the question around accounting issues and the implications for the audit report mean a very frequently asked question. Sound knowledge of paragraphs is the key. Students are less clear with paragraphs. Uh, I think since December 23 exam, uh, examining team is more focused on paragraphs because they believe students are good on opinions, qualified, adverse, unqualified. But on paragraphs, the students are very like um, blur. They've confused paragraphs like EOMP, CAM, uh, MURGC, OMP, OIP, other information paragraphs. How many paragraphs are there? You have paragraphs like uh, CAM, you have paragraphs like uh, M U R G C, O M P, E O M P, and then you have an other information paragraph, O I P, other information paragraph. Yes. In which situation which paragraph will come? Students are confused on that. They just mix them up. When they have to give O M P, they give E O M P. When they have to give CAM, they give E O M P. When they have to give MURGC, they give uh, something else. So you please ensure you're very sound and very clear on when which paragraph will come. Try to make your notes. Try to make your rules very clear on the situations which give rise to the paragraphs. But paragraphs are more important for June 24 exams. Please ensure you have a sound knowledge on paragraphs. So that completes off the syllabus area E. I hope you're sound and clear with the content which comes from syllabus area E, evidence, uh, communicating with TCWG, deficiencies, uh, and a lot of questions around a report. A lot of questions around reports. Is that clear to all of you? Syllabus area E is an integral part of question uh, section B. Okay. Syllabus area F. Now, we know this is frequently asked in section B. Syllabus area F will never come in section A. It always come in section B. 
So we know one of the question in section B can be from anywhere in the syllabus areas, apart from D and E. We discussed that yesterday. So the most potential uh, question from section B could be uh, other assignments, which is syllabus area F. One of the favorite section B question, uh, but it's not always tested, right? It is one of the favorite, but not always tested. Other assignments. You should be well versed with all other assignments which are in your course. I hope you know the list of the other assignments you have in course, like due diligence review, review of prospective financial information, forensic audit, uh, sustainability assurance, performance audit, audit of audit in the public sector, audit of performance information. So there are a list of five. These are five other assignments. Audit of performance information, which is also known as a public sector audit. Uh, then you have the sustainability assurance, which has recently been added in. And then you have due diligence. You have forensic. You have uh, review of prospective financial information. So you should be well versed with other assignments. You should know what types of question comes on each and every other assignment. Let's take a look at something common in uh, syllabus area F. Matters in accepting engagement, very common, just like practice management, right? So practice management is a very regular feature of other assignments. So what matters will you consider when you are accepting an other assignment from an existing client or from a new client? Practice management. I hope you're clear with the bullet number two, three, sorry. Matters in accepting engagement, which is other assignment, either from an existing client or a new client. Procedures and evidence. We know a lot of time examining team ask you procedures and evidence on other assignments, due diligence, a lot of procedures, uh, prospective financial information, a lot of procedures and evidence. Forensic, a lot of procedures. Ethical and professional issues. A lot of time we've seen ethical and professional issues in due diligence uh, in forensic audit. So very favorite topic for other assignments. So in other assignments, you do get questions which you've already done in the preceding syllabus areas like practice management. You you did practice management uh, in the syllabus area C. You did procedures and evidence in syllabus area D and E. You did ethical and professional issues in syllabus area B. So your previous syllabus is helping you with other assignments. Specific inquiries and additional information. You know this comes in due diligence only. Specific inquiries is a very favorite question in due diligence. Additional information is a very f uh, favorite question in due diligence. Evaluate the assumptions underlying the forecast, whether the assumptions made by management are right or wrong, good or bad, realistic or unrealistic. So evaluate the assumptions underlying the forecast, which is from PFI, prospective financial information, or implication for the report on PFI, appraise the PFI report. I think once this question has come out twice where you were given a short PFI report and you need to appraise the PFI report just like you appraise the audit report. So a short appraisal of a PFI report and PFI report is part of your syllabus, right? So please ensure you know how to do the appraisal of a PFI report. So syllabus area F, you should be sound on other assignments. You should be sound on ethical and professional issues. You should be sound on matters and accepting engagement procedures and evidence, how you evaluate the underlying assumptions, implication for the PFI report, specific inquiries and additional information. These are a couple of things, common things, which are from syllabus area F, but that's not the end. We discussed something yesterday, top 16 articles. And I hope you remember in those top 16 articles, there were three articles on sustainability assurance. Expect the unexpected. That's right here. The recent addition and focus around sustainability, which we were even discussing yesterday, through the three articles published under a year time. Under a year time, three articles. One of them just came before the March 24 exams. Three articles under a year on sustainability. So what are you looking for in June 24 exams? Can something come around sustainability assurance? Could possibly be. So please ensure you read through the proposed international standard on sustainability assurance 5000. You should have a sound knowledge of this IEEE 5000. You should have read the 
Assurance of Social, Environmental and Sustainability Information Part 1, Assurance of Social, Environmental and Sustainability Information Part 2, both of them are important. The, the, these two articles will discuss about matters you should decide when accepting uh, engagement on sustainability assurance. Uh, ethical and professional issues with sustainability assurance, procedures on sustainability assurance, uh, and even the reporting side of sustainability assurance. So these two articles will tell you a lot of things about procedures, uh, ethical and professional issues, uh, will uh, guide you about the methods in accepting an engagement, etc. Even uh, the other information paragraph in the audit report, because sustainability information is put as other information in the, in the annual report, so what is auditor responsibility for the other information? Uh, because uh, that is part of ISA 720. That is also covered in the article, I think, part uh, one. Here. Yeah. Please ensure you go through these three standards on three articles on your screen. I even guided them yesterday. I hope you remember that. So will you be doing these three articles? Will you be having a sound knowledge on sustainability assurance? There could be a possibility that a question around sustainability assurance comes in June 24 exam. And when you are reading these articles, please read the exam focus. Because exam focus will tell you how it will come. Don't skip the exam focus paragraph. Read the exam focus paragraph to know how it can come in the future exams. So syllabus area F is important but the area of sustainability from syllabus area F seems more important for the upcoming exams. And that brings us to the last area, syllabus area G, which is current issues. Are there any current issues for the June 24 exams? Honestly, no. We have a proposed standard, uh, which was right here, proposed standard, but this proposed standard is published under syllabus area F. This is not published under syllabus area G. Everything proposed is a current issue. So uh, this proposed IWSA 5000 can come in your exam. So this could be one thing you should be aware of. Number two, is there any particular article examining team has written about a current issue for June 24 exams? No, but you should be knowing something. Yes. Number one, data analytics. You know, there is an article on that. I uh, did recommend it uh, in my top 16 articles yesterday, data analytics, expect the unexpected. You should read this fully. In this article, examining team has given you the procedures which the auditor can apply using data analytics. They have given you uh, the uses by the audit firm. Uh, data analytics, how you use it, uh, how you use it as an audit firm, how these automated tools coming from data analytics can be used to scan and analyze the data of the client. How can you scan and analyze the greater data of the client using data analytics? How can you bring efficiency to your audit by using data analytics? What are benefits of it? And what are challenges? If the auditing team is using data analytics as a tool to analyze the client information or the client ledgers or the client financial statement, what sort of challenges can they face? These are three good things covered in the article. Please ensure you read benefits, you read challenges. Any of them can be asked in any future exams. Yes, I've covered as, uh, my video on data analytics uh, and I think that's that's on my YouTube channel. I can also share that in my groups uh, after the webinar comes to an end today because I've done it, I, I think a year or two ago because this is quite an old article. So I think perhaps two years ago, I've done the video. Uh, I might do a new one even, uh, but I'm not committing, not promising. But I try my best to do a new one. But again, uh, the old video when this article was published is there on my YouTube channel. But please don't rule this out. Uh, climatical risk and the auditor responsibility. My regular students who are enrolled in my course, you have a section of current issue on your portal, right? And in that section of current issue, I've covered climatical risk and the auditor responsibility. Considering a lot of focus on sustainability information, uh, a, a lot of focus on sustainability assurance, climatical risk cannot be ruled out. What is the auditor responsibility for the climatical changes, climatical risk? How can the auditor give a sustainability assurance on the climatical risk? So climatical risk is a current issue. 
can it come in June 24 exam? Can something around climatical risk and the auditor responsibility be asked in? My regular students, you already have my video on that in your regular course. Please do ensure you revise it on the safe side. Data analytics, you read it on the safe side. And the three particular standards in front of your screen around sustainability. So sustainability, uh, climatical risk, and data analytics. These are three things which I believe something could come in. But again, this is just a probability. It could be nothing come from it. But you need to go safe, right? You need to be uh, proactive in your approach to exam. You cannot be reactive in your approach that you go to the exam hall and you see something on data analytics and you say, oh, uh, it could have been better. I prepared it. So should you all be proactive in your appro uh, approach for the June 24 exams uh, or risk averse, risk averse approach, not risk seeking approach, not leaving something right. Do everything and get to the exam hall. So is, is this uh, uh, grasp of uh, success clear to all of you? Has this uh, benefited you? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Has this given you some sort of a checklist, an idea? Uh, once you get the presentation, you can take a print out. You can ensure, okay, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Look at the 16 articles I recommended you yesterday. I hope you can now connect the 16 articles from day one to day two. Anyone who has taken the day one and day two together? Now, now can you relate the 16 articles with the grasp, grasp of success? And tomorrow we have techniques to success. So if you have a grasp, you will understand the techniques because tomorrow we will be discussing the exam techniques, which are the most important things to deliver on the day of exam to pass. You, you, you have the grasp, but you don't have the techniques. You will fail. So approach the grasp techniques come tomorrow. Okay, so is that clear to all of you? Any particular question from the grass before I end the webinar? Anything you would like to ask in? You have uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, anything around the grass to success? Your time starts now. Anything you would like to discuss or ask? This is your opportunity. Okay, can we use SPR pocket notes to revise accounting standards, sir? Perfectly, 200 percent, three, you can. If you are using it, perfect. Any other question? Yes, you can do the articles on SPR I guided you yesterday. So again, I, I even told you yesterday that accounting standards will vary from a student to student. Uh, it all depends upon when have you given the SPR. Okay. So should we start from section A or B? Uh, wait for tomorrow, Samuel. We have exam techniques tomorrow. Section A or section B will come tomorrow. Which one to start with? Time management will come tomorrow. Uh, is there any possibility of a current issue to come in the remaining days? No, uh, the time has lapsed. Normally, if anything has to come, will come in the first one week of May. So we have crossed the first one week of May. So nothing, nothing special for the June 24 exams. Jessica. Okay. Can we work on the mock exams under strict exam conditions and send to you for corrections if you are my regular student? Definitely. Syllabus area G covers data analytics. Yes, climatical risk is a current issue. Uh, sustainability is syllabus area F, right? Kilani. Syllabus area, uh, sustainability is syllabus area F. But I was talking about that climatical risk looks important in the context of sustainability. The focus on sustainability under syllabus area F 
means that some sort of climatical discussion is going in the examiner mindset. I hope you're clear on that, uh, Kelani. Okay, I hope you're all clear. Uh, so I'm just ending the webinar now, uh, which was about the grasp to success. Uh, Lawrence, are you part of my regular course? I, I just mentioned uh, that uh, a question, uh, you need to read the exam technique article part two around risk where examining team has given you uh, how a risk question can come. So that's, that's nothing unusual because this is in line with the exam technique article. Right, and I, I've already covered these uh, types of question in my regular webinars. I do the paid webinars. So please do read the article, Lawrence. Uh, that type of question is already covered in the exam technique article. Uh, that examining team will tell you why the following risks are identified as significant, A, B, C, D. Rather than you do the normal approach of identifying risk from the case study. Any article on climatical risk? No, there's no cl no article on climatical risk. But climatical risk is a current issue. Uh, Ida, uh, uh, did you watch my day one webinar yesterday? Because I, I've given you some sort of uh, checklist what you should do uh, inside 27 days. So you need to shorten that list uh, for what you should do in the last 10 days if you're getting less sleep. So just, just shorten that up, right? There could not be any particular list for 10 days. But you have to shorten that from the list I've given you yesterday. Okay, then that is it. All the best, all of you. Uh, I'll see you back on the day three. And on the day three, we are looking at uh, techniques to success. Uh, section A first or section B first, time management, some of the typical questions, but lot, lots more, lots more in terms of techniques coming your way tomorrow. So do join me tomorrow for the day three. We'll look at techniques to success tomorrow. And I hope that would be the third dimension we are taking about success. Webinars to success. And that's what we are focusing on. Approach to success, grasp to success, and tomorrow, techniques to success. Take very good care of yourself, study effectively, and I'll see you back tomorrow with the day three of this AAA Webinars to Success for June 24. Your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off. Have a good day. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.